All right, so about to do section 1.4. I think it's a pretty friendly section, but, but I feel like it might be a bit on the long side because I, I uh, you know, print out kind of you know, one problem per page and uh, it seems really thick. So hopefully it isn't much more than an hour, but, but um, it really could be. So the beginning of section 1.4 it's kind of like the beginning of most of the sections in chapter one where we just I just hammer you with a bunch of definitions. Again, I'll never ask a definition on a test, but I'll use the words as I do the problem. So it's just you know it's good to have an understanding of what the words mean, but you don't have to ever give a formal definition. So in this section, we're going to learn three set operations and a, a few other terms. So. Um, the first thing we want to introduce in this section is the concept of a universal set. And a universal set is a set that's created for a, sp for a particular problem or a particular group of problems which will contain all of the elements for that set of problems. Usually, universal sets are given the name U. So this might be an example of a universal set. Usually I'll list it in roster form. So a universal set usually will be denoted with the name U and then will contain whatever elements I decide it's going to contain. So this is a finite universal set that has the numbers 1 through 8. Most of the times when I create a universal set, a set that, that's for the universe for a specific problem, I use the letter U, but sometimes we use this Greek letter that I'm not sure that I can draw, the Greek letter Z. Feels like I should write A there as opposed to Anne, but I don't know, I don't teach English. Hopefully Anne is correct. So a universe, and I really don't think I can draw this symbol. So a universal set is going to be given the name U or the Greek letter Z, and it contain contain anything. It could be a finite set, it could be an infinite set, but for one specific group of problems, the universal set is going to be the only elements that we'll consider. And so when we get deeper into this section, you'll get a better understanding why we need a universal set and, and exactly you know how we use a universal set. When we work with two and three sets, if we want to do if we want to join two sets together, we don't have standard operations like we have with numbers. With numbers, we can add numbers, we can subtract numbers, we can multiply numbers, we can divide numbers. With sets, you can't really add sets, you can't really multiply sets, you can't really divide sets, you can't really subtract sets. With sets, we have operations to combine two sets to get another set, and there's three main set operations. And the three main set operations are complement, and we'll do a bunch of examples with complements on the next few page. The complement of a set is every element in the universal set that's not part of this set. So for so two sets combined. So if I have if, if I have a set A that has some elements, then set A complement written with a little I don't know, apostrophe. Say a complement will contain every element in the universal set that's not in A. And that's why we need a universal set. Otherwise, complements don't make sense. And then, similarly, B complement would be 
every element in the universal set that's not in set B. C complement would be every element in the universal set that's not in set C. So complements kind of work that, that way. They're, you need a universal set, and they're everything in the universal set other than that set. Intersection is the next operation that we'll work do with two, two sets. And intersection is what the sets have in common. So when I see, in, when I see the word intersection, I think what they have in common. And the symbol for intersection is this upside down U. And sometimes when I read that symbol, I'll say the word intersection. Sometimes I'll say the word and. They're kind of used interchangeably. Mathematically, intersection and and are words that go together. And the symbol A intersection B would ask me to find the elements that both A and B have in common. You don't really need a universal set for intersection. The last operation that we get in, sec in this section 1.4 is union. The symbol for union is a U. And sometimes when I see this symbol, I'll say the word union. Sometimes I'll say the word or. So intersection, the word that I might use in place of intersection is and. Union, the word I might use in place of, of union is or. And the union of two sets would be just any element that's in one set or the other or both. So the union of A union B would be any element that is in A, B, or both A and B. Unions get really big because it's like taking the two sets and forming a big set of them that contains every element that's in one set or the other. Intersections get smaller. And complements, I can't tell you whether they'll get smaller or bigger. It depends how many elements are in the beginning set relative to the number of elements in the universe. So again, we don't know, need to know these definitions perfectly well. What we need to be able to do is solve problems that involve complements, unions, and intersections, and that's what we'll get to next. So for this quick example here, I made up a, a universal set, a nice small universal set, and for this example, my universal sets has the numbers one through five, and then I randomly created a set A having the numbers one, two, three, and the set A and B having two, three, four. The first thing that I want to find for this universe is find A complement. And remember, A complement, it's a set, so it's going to have set brackets, but it's going to contain every element that's in the universe that's not in set A. I already have this typed, but I just feel the urge to write it. So if I wanted to find a complement, what I can do is take the universal set, in this case, for this particular example, the universal set is the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I just, from that universal set, scratch out what set A is, so 1's in A, so I'll scratch it out because it's not in the complement. 2's in A, I'll scratch it out because 2 can't be an A complement because it's an A. And 3, I'll scratch out because 3 is also an A. So what I've done from the universal set is I removed all the elements of A from the universal set. What's left is what the elements of A complement. So A complement is a set, so I put it in set braces, and it has two elements, 4 and 5. So complements are really pretty friendly. Complements, you need a universal set. It's every element in the universal set that isn't in the set that's named without the complement. The next um, thing I'm asked to find 
is A intersection B. Of course, to find A intersection B, I have to know what sets A and B are, and I don't really need to know the universe. So in this problem, to do A intersection B, set A contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Set B contains the numbers 2, 3, and 4. So A intersection B is what those two sets have in common. And if I look at the two sets A and the two sets and the set B next to each other, what they have in common is the numbers 2 and 3. When I intersect a set, I get another set. So it would be correct to say A intersection B is a set, so I put it in set braces, and that set has the elements that A and B have in common, which are just the numbers 2 and 3. So if I was asked to find for the, in this universal set for this particular A and this particular B, A intersection B is the set that contains 2 and 3. The last thing I'm asked to do for this example is find A union B. And again, I need to know what A and B are. I don't really need to know what the universe is. So in this particular problem, A is the set 1, 2, and 3. B is the set 2, 3, and 4. If I'm asked to find A union B, what I'm asked to do is make a big set that contains every element of A along with every element of B. So I could do that. A union B, this is technically A union B. I could take the three elements of A, 1, 2, and 3, and the three elements of B, 2, 3, and 4, and this is technically A union B, but it's not written very nicely because generally we won't write the same element of a set twice. So in A union B, I have the two listed twice, I have the three listed twice. That's not probably very desirable. So instead of saying A union B is 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to simplify this to take out the duplication to get my best answer. So to find a union of two sets, you just take the two sets, put them in a huge set, and then remove any duplication and write the, write the numbers or the elements in a nice order if a nice order is, is easy to find. So what I did is I just took out the duplication and I get A union B. That's all there is for the operations. It's the only three operations that we get in this section, complement, intersection, and union. Complement, you need a universal set because it's everything in the universal set that's not part of the set that it's asked to find the complement of. Intersections, what they have in common. Union, you form the two sets in one huge set and then get rid of the duplication. So I'm doing another example, and this is a little bit harder. Um, a new universal set that has the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I made A have A, B, and C, and B have C, D, and E. I just completely made these up. Um, usually I use the letters U, A, and B for set names, U for the universal set, A and B for the subsets of the universe, but you can certainly use other set names, and like I said, the universe doesn't even have to have this name. So. The next example I want to do is to see what A set A prime and B have in common. Well, I know what set B is, so this is asking me to take set B, which is the set C, D, E, and intersect it, which is, set, which is set A prime. Well, I don't know what set A prime is yet, so I don't know which two sets I'm intersecting. So to, to find the intersection of two sets, I need to know the elements of each of the sets, and so I need to know what A prime contains and then I can intersect that successfully with B. Well, if A has A, B, and C, A prime is every element in the universal set that isn't in set A. So if from the universal set, I take out the A, B, and C, I'll be left with set A prime. So what I'm asked to intersect in this problem is set A prime and set B. I didn't know what set A prime was, so I created it. Now I can intersect the two sets. How do I intersect two sets? I write them next to each other. So A prime is the set D, E, and F. B is the set C, D, and E. Intersection asks me to find what these have in common. And these two sets, 
both have the letters D and E. That's what they have in common. So it would be correct to say the answer to A prime intersection B is a set that contains D and E because that's what the two sets A prime and B have in common. So for an answer, I can just write the set down without the problem written next to it. Or if I want to be nice, I can write the problem and then what it equals to next. So this is probably a better form of the answer than just writing down the set like I did when I typed this up. But it's completely fine if you don't write down the problem next to the answer. Probably do more with these sets, so let, let me keep going. So the next example, the next um, operation I want to find with this set is to find A union B prime. Well, in order to do A union B prime, I have to know the elements of A, which are A, B, and C, and I also have to have the elements of B prime. Well, the elements of B prime are every element that's in the universal set for this problem other than the C, D, and E. So I'm gonna take the C, the D, and the E and remove it from the universal set. When I take B away from the universal set, what's left is B prime. So B prime is gonna be A, B, and F. So now I know the two sets I'm asked to union. I'm asked to union set A, which has A, B, and C, and set B prime, which has A, B, and F. And always when I union two sets, I take the two sets and make a huge set out of them. So if I'm asked to union A, which is A, B, and C, and B prime, which is A, B, and F, I take the A set, write it first, which is A, B, and C, take the B prime set, write it second, made a huge set containing all the elements of A and all the elements of B prime. This is correct in terms of that is what A union B prime equals, but it's not written very nicely because there's duplication and the duplication shouldn't really be written. So I'm gonna take out the duplication. The duplication here, the A is written twice, the B is written twice. So I'm gonna remove the duplication. And when I remove the duplication, I have A, B, C, and F left over. Perfectly fine answer. Probably would have been nicer if I said the set A union B prime equals a, the set A, B, C, and F. Regardless if I put the problem with my answer or not, my the elements that go in my answer should go into set braces because when you union sets, complement sets, or intersection sets, you get another set. Uh, I always forget to hold on. I always forget to use my little uh, separator piece of paper and then when I forget my separator piece of paper this sharpie bleeds through and uh, so I literally can't find the separator piece of paper it's kind of fun for me for whatever reason um, teaching in different colors and I have no idea why but I like using the colored sharpies what I don't like about the colored sharpies is that they bleed through if you don't put up a backer paper on my backer paper all right so now we're getting into some homework problems. So how the homework generally works, should work this way the whole semester, is I will display on my overhead or on your computer screen um, an even and an odd problem. They should solve the same way. I'm gonna do the odd prob even problem, you're gonna do the odd problem. So I'm gonna try to do problem two right now. And problem two wants me to find B prime. So the universe for this particular problem has the elements A, B, C, D, and E. And I want to find B prime, so I need to strike from that universe A, C, and D, because that's what B has in it. So when I remove the three elements of B from the universe, I'm left with what B prime is. So my number two, the answer, be nice if I write the problem with the answer, I get B prime equals the set B and E. Complement is the e easiest. Sometimes when I see that symbol, I read it as a prime. And some books will call that prime as opposed to complement, for what it's worth. Uh, my number four is much harder than your number three, but I'm gonna attack number four. To do number four, I need to take A prime and union it with B prime. 
well, in order to find the union of two sets, I need to know the elements of the sets. And I'm not given the elements of the sets, so I'm going to find them. B prime I already found. B prime is, has B and E in it. So, and A prime, well, if A has C, D, and E, then A prime has everything that's in the universe that's not C, D, and E. So A prime is going to be A and B. So now I can attack my problem four. My problem four wants me to find A prime union B prime. And to do a union, I'm going to take the A prime set, write it, its two elements first. Then I'm going to write the B prime set and its two elements second. And then from my answer, I'm going to remove any duplication and write the letters in a nice order. So my answer, writing the problem with the answer is probably better than just writing the set that you get. And I'm going to delete the B. So I'm going to write A, B, and E for an answer. Honestly, the work that I'm showing here usually isn't the work that I do by myself. I can look at these two sets and know what the union is without having to do this intermediate step. It's just, you know, if, if, you, if you can't go from the problem and find the union of two sets, then this intermediate step should take you there every time. Six wants me to find A prime intersection B prime. I'm not going to figure out what A prime and B prime are again, so for your five is easier than my six. So for my six, I need the A prime set, which is the set that contains A and B, and the B prime set, which is the set that contains B and E, because for this set of problems, the A prime and the B prime are the same because the universal sets and the A's and the B's are the same. For my problem six to do A prime intersection B prime, I'm going to take the set A prime, which has the elements A, B, and intersect it, which is the set B prime, and the set B prime has B and E, and intersection is what the sets have in common. So A prime intersection B prime is going to have the elements A and B. So for my answer to number six, I'm going to say A prime intersection B prime is the set that just contains the letter B. Eight. I'll do eight, you'll do seven. Intersections I like better. Eight wants me to take set A, which is C, D, and E, and intersect that with set B prime, and B prime was the B and E. So eight is asking me to intersect set A with set B prime. Set A was given at C, D, and E. Set B prime wasn't given, but I figured it out. It has to set B and E. And for an answer to number eight, intersection is what sets have in common. So I can say A intersection B prime is, and those only have E in common. So the intersection is the easiest because it's just smaller and I don't have to, I can get there in one step. 10 wants me to do A union B prime. So I'm gonna take set A which is a set C, D, and E. Put a union symbol, and then next to it, put the set B prime, and the set B prime again is a set B and E. And when I union two sets, I form a big set. I take every element of each set and shove them together in one big set. So I took the A set, which is C, D, and E, and the B prime set, which is B and E, jammed them together in a big set. Now I want to remove any duplication, so I don't need two E's, one E is enough. And it probably would be nice if I wrote the answer alphabetically, but as long as you have the correct elements, if you don't take the time to rewrite these alphabetically, I'm not going to take points off. So as long as your answer, if you were doing problem eight, had B, C, D, and E, for the four elements, the order wouldn't matter. For that matter, if you had the E written twice, I wouldn't take points off. I'd probably scratch it off, but it's not technically wrong. It's just not really um, desirable.
And again, every time you're doing a problem, you should be checking the answer to make sure you're, you're understanding this. So when you did your problem nine, you should get A, B, C, and D for an answer. That's assuming my answer is correct. Um, it usually takes about two years or four semesters for students to find every mistake I have in my work. And so if this is kind of, you know, this is um, almost 2015 right now, if it's you know 2015, 2016, and you're watching this video and you're doing the problem, you might find a mistake. If you find a mistake, let me know so I can get it fixed. For that matter, if I make a mistake on my video, let me know, um, and I'll make some sort of comment about it. If I have like one mistake in a video, I, I probably won't take the time to re-record the video. But if I start getting two and three mistakes in a video, usually I'll come back and redo the video. And the, the, sucky thing is a lot of times when I redo the videos I make a mistake anyway so it's almost kind of pointless but I like these things to be at least as close to perfect as they can be I mean I never perfect with anything and, and um, like I said I just I make mistakes and when I sit in this room by myself which is what I'm doing right now kind of the week before Christmas um, sitting in this room and, and just doing this lecture um, I don't know, you, you, your mind starts to wander and you start messing up. So hopefully I don't do you too poorly on this. Okay, um, 12 has a new universal set. The, U has, you know, the universal set has the numbers 1 through 5, A the numbers 1 through 3, B has the number just 5. When I do number 12, it wants me to find B complement. B complement, I just go to my universal set remove the only element of B, which is 5. B complement is going to have the f numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 because the only number I have to remove from the universal set is the number 5, and I'm left with 1, 2, 3, and 4. A complement is going to be 4 and 5, and I might need that here in a second. And I will. So to do 14, I need to union A complement with B complement. A complement is going to be 4 and 5 because A has 1, 2, and 3. And if I take 1, 2, and 3 from the universe, you get 4 and 5. So A complement is 4 and 5. I just figured out B complement is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if I find A complement union B complement when I'm doing number 14, I'm going to take the A complement set, which is 4 and 5 and put that together in one big set with the B complement set 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'll remove any duplication, then I'll write stuff in a nice order. So technically, when I'm unioning two sets, I make a big set that contains each of the sets that I'm unioning, take out any duplication, there's two fours, I don't need the two fours written, and then write the numbers in a nice order, or the letters in a nice order, if they're letters that, that form the set. So for my answer, for this one, I'm going to say A prime union B prime is going to have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which is all of everything in U. 16 wants me to find A prime intersection B prime, and I'm not going to recreate A prime and B prime. To do A prime intersection B prime, First, I'm going to write down the contents of A prime, which are the numbers 4 and 5. Then write my intersection symbol, and then the contents of B prime, which are 1, 2, 3, and 4. An intersection is so much nicer than union, because intersection gets smaller, it's less to write, and I can do it in one step. Intersection two sets is what the sets have in common and those two sets have the number four in common. So for my answer, I'm gonna say A prime intersection B prime is the set that contains the number four. And my set braces get progressively uglier as I do more of these problems and I'm just, not, they're not that important to be, you know, perfect set braces. So hopefully you're pacing me and doing all the odd problems while I do the even problems. 18 wants me to do set A intersection with set B prime. 
Set A has the numbers 1, 2, and 3. B prime has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when I intersect two sets, I write what the sets have in common. These two sets both have 1, 2, 3 in common. So my answer to number 18, what A intersection B prime is, is going to be the set 1, 2, and 3. Twenty wants me to do A union B prime, so for 20 I'm going to find set A, which is the set 1, 2, and 3, write my union symbol, and then the set B prime, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4, so A union B prime is going to have the entire A set, which is the set 1, 2, and 3, then the entire B prime set, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4, get rid of any duplication, which is the 1, 2, and 3, and then write the answer without the duplication in a nice order. I'd like to write the problem next to my answer, but again, if you just write the answer and don't write the problem next to it, it hardly matters. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 is going to be the answer for 20. Okay, so now we're going to kick it up a notch, and we're going to add a set C, and it gets a little bit harder, but it's not really any different. When we have three sets, um, sometimes the problems will have parentheses. We have to do the inside of the parentheses first, just like regular orders of operations. And other than that, we have to work from left to right. It's not like you do intersection before union, or like, you know, like, a, like multiplication gets done before subtraction. The orders of operations for sets, intersections, complements, and unions is inside of parentheses first, and then work from left to right. So my first example here with adding a set C is A union B union C. To do A union B union C, I need to work from left to right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find what A union B is, and then after I find out what A union B is, I'm gonna add the C part. So what is A union B? Well, A union B, you take the A set and the B set, write them in a big set. So A union B, I'll have the set A, B, C, which is the A set, C, D, E, which is the B set. I'll remove any duplication, so don't need two C's. So it's going to be A, B, C, D, and E. So A union B is the set A, B, C, D, and E. So now in my problem, instead of writing A union B, B union C, in place of A union B, I'm going to say it's A, B, C, D, and E union C, because I can replace that symbol, A union B, with what it equals to A, B, C, D, and E, and that's what I've written right here. So going from the original problem to the kind of the finishing the first step, I replace the symbol A union B with a set that it's equal to. And now I'm done with one of the, op the first union I'm done with. Now I need to do the second union. The second union is to take the set A union B that I created, union it with the set C. So to, to form unions of two sets, I write down what each set is. A union B is the set A, B, C, D, and E. C is the set D, E, and F. Now I'm gonna take those two sets. There's the A union B, A, B, C, D, and E. Here's C, the set D, E, and F. I wrote them in one big set, and now I'm going to remove any duplications. I've got a D written twice, I have an E written twice, and now I'm going to write down what's left, and what's left is the answer to A union B union C. A union B union C equals the set that has A, B, C, D, E, and F. So these are just tedious, but they're not actually ridiculously hard. All right, so next problem I have a parentheses, and when you have a parentheses, you need to do the inside of the parentheses first. So the inside of the parentheses wants me to find B union C. And what is B union C? B union C is a set. You start off by taking all the elements of B, which are C, D, and E, 
and then follow them up by all the elements of C, which is D, E, and F. That's B union C, but I'm going to get rid of the duplications. I don't need two Ds. I don't need two Es. So B union C by itself would be the set that had C, D, E, and F. So I've done the inside of the parentheses. The inside of the parentheses, B union C, comes out to the set C, D, E, and F shouldn't probably drop my parentheses so what I've done right now this is probably not written so nicely what I've done is I found B union C so inside my parentheses in the original problem I could change the inside of the parentheses to have C D E and F and what I need to do is find the complement of that set because I found out what this set is, now I want to find the complement of it. Well, the complement of any set is everything in the universe that's not part of that set. And for this problem, the universe contained A, B, C, D, E, and F. If I want to complement C, D, E, and F, I'm going to take C, D, E, and F from the universe. And when I take C, D, E, and F from the universe, I'm left with A and B. So B union C complement is going to be the set that contains the elements A and B. So my answer would have been nicer if I took the time to write the problem with the answer, but I didn't. It's not wrong. It's just being lazy. It's going to be A and B. So when there's parentheses, you simplify the inside of the parentheses down to a single set. If there's a complement outside the parentheses, you have to find its complement before you drop the parentheses. Ugh, this is not good. Um, well, let me deal with it now. So, A union P union C complement in parentheses. So, first thing I need to do is the parentheses. Inside of the parentheses first. What's inside the parentheses? It's B union C. Oh, how beautiful. This was being clever. Um, first, I do the parentheses. B union C complement. Well, I've already figured out what B union C complement is. So my first step was to figure out what this thing that I boxed with is. And this is just the answer to the last problem. So I was being clever right here. The answer to B union C complement, or what it simplifies to, was A and B. And that's what we did in the last example. I don't need to do it again. The sets are the same. B union C complement is going to be A and B, regardless of where it's written in a problem. So I found out what B union C complement was, so I'm going to rewrite the problem. I'm going to leave the A, I'm going to leave the union symbol, but instead of the parentheses that has the B union C complement inside of it, I'm going to put AB because that's what B union C complement is. Now I'm ready to do the union of these two sets. To do the union of these two sets, I write down what A is, which is A, B, and C. I write down what B union C complement is, which is AB, and now I'm going to form those two sets into a big set. So there's the A, B, and C from set A. Here's the A and B from set B union C complement. That's technically the union, but when you're writing unions, you usually get rid of any duplication. So there's two A's, I only need one A. There's two B's, I only need one B. And then I write the numbers or the letters in nice order. A, B, and C is a good order. So my answer would have been nice if I said A union B union C complement is the set that contains A, B, and C. So, it's, I mean, it doesn't get ridiculously hard, but it gets very tedious. I, I somehow, I, sometimes I don't like doing these problems because they're just really, really tedious, and i you know probably rather not do them, but, but they make me teach them. And set theory, believe it or not, comes up a ton in higher level mathematics. If you were, you know, got your probably not getting a degree in math because you're in math 142, but if you were getting a degree in mathematics and you picked up a, a, a graduate level or 300 level math book, it's just, you know, set theory is kind of the, the language of higher mathematics. So it's important in some, for a lot of people, uh, because this is how people communicate in mathematics. All right, so this next problem, I need to do the inside of the parentheses, and I have to remember because I don't have it written down on this page. For this problem, the universal set was A, B, C, D, E, and 
F set A is the set A, B, and C, which means A complement, because I'm going to need that here in a second, is going to be D, E, and F, because the complement of A is the elements that are in the universe that aren't in A. B is the set C, D, and E. I don't need B complement, so I'm not going to write it down. C was the set D, E, and F. So C complement is going to be the set A, B, and C. I think I have everything that I need here. So first of all, I'm going to do the parentheses. The parentheses doesn't have a prime outside of it, so it's a little bit easier. So to do B intersection C prime, the inside of that parentheses, first I write set B down. Set B is the set C, D, and E. Then I write set C prime down. Set C prime is the set A, B, and C. And I'm intersecting these, so I'm going to write what they have in common. And they both have C in problem, in common. So B intersection C prime, that entire parentheses can be replaced with the letter C. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. I'm going to, haven't done anything with the A prime from the original problem, haven't done anything with the intersection from the original problem, but this B intersection C prime I can change to the letter C. So I can take this more complicated looking problem and write it as a less complicated looking problem. I went from a problem that had two intersections down to a problem that has one intersection. I've done the first intersection, now I'm going to do the first intersection. A prime intersection C. I'm going to write down what A prime is, which is D, E, and F. I'm going to intersect that with C. And intersection is what they have in common. They don't have anything in common. And when you're intersecting sets, if they have nothing in common, the intersection is the empty set. So my answer, I could write with the problem next to the answer. Or I can just write a symbol that means the empty set. And there's two symbols that can mean the empty set. So for my answer, I could have just written the set brackets with nothing inside them, or I could have written A prime intersection, B intersection, C prime equals the empty set. And again, if you don't write the problem next to the answer, it's not a deal breaker. Okay, I, it's not even the end of the homework, but it's, it's the homeward stretch here. Okay, so I have sets A, B, and C, and 22 wants me to intersect, so I'm going to do 22 and you're going to do 21, B and C. So set B is the set that contains 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to carry this intersection symbol down, and set C has the numbers 1 and 5. And when I intersect two sets, I write what they have in common. These have nothing in common, so the answer to number 22 it's an empty set problem because when you're intersecting, you're finding the elements that the sets have in common. And when they have nothing in common, you could write an answer with set braces with nothing inside of it. Or you could write a zero with a line through it. That means the same thing as an empty set. So again, you should do 23, I'll do 24. You should check your answer for 23. So 24 wants me to do B union C. B is the set 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to write my union symbol. And C is the set 1 and 5. So B union C is going to be the set that has these three elements from the left set, 2, 3, and 4, and those two elements from the right set, 1 and 5. That's B union C. There's no duplication that I need to cross out, so this would be an acceptable answer. It's not written in a nice order, and it probably would be nicer, just in terms of it's easier to grade if you write the numbers in ascending order. This would be a better answer. Again, I don't need to write the problem next to the answer, but you could. So if, you took, if I took the time to say B union C equals the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, that's probably better than just writing the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but it wouldn't get you any more points for writing the problem with the answer on a test than not. 
26 I'll do, 25 you should do. Uh, 26 I'm going to work from left to right, so the first thing I'm going to do is find A union B. And then I'll worry about the intersection C afterwards. So A union B, I'll take the A set, which has the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and the B set, which has the numbers 2, 3, and 4, and union those together. So A union B is going to have the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and 2, 3, and 4. And I'm not going to write the 2 twice, I'm not going to write the 3 twice. So A union B has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm not done, but that's the first step. I'm working left to right. So now I can rewrite my problem. My original problem says A union B, intersection C. In place of the A union B, in place of this, I'm going to write 1, 2, 3, and 4 because that's what A union B equals. Now I'm going to intersect that with C. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4 intersection with C, which is 1 and 5. And intersection is what they have in common, and what these have in common are the numbers 1. So my answer to this whole problem, the A union B intersection C can, is a set, and it just contains the number 1. All right, 28, I'm going to work from left to right. You'll do 27. So for 28, the first thing I need to do is find B intersection A. To do B intersection A, I'm going to write the B set, which is the set 2, 3, and 4, an intersection symbol, then the A set, which is the set 1, 2, and 3. So B intersection A is what these two sets have in common. They both have 2, 3 in common. So that's the first step. I work from left to right. I did B intersection A. So now I can change the problem and say B intersection A union C equals the set 2, 3 union C because I can replace the symbol B intersection A with the set 2, 3. And now I'm going to take and get rid of the C by writing what C is equal to. C is equal to 1 and 5. And now I'm ready for an answer. Nicely, these two sets don't have any duplication. So when I, inter when I union them, I get something that at least doesn't have any duplication that I need to get rid of. So I could say 2, 3, 1, and 5 by taking the two elements of B intersection A with the two elements of B. And then again, anytime we write a union, it's probably easier for grading purposes. Or anytime we do any set operation, it's easier for grading purposes if you write that the numbers are in order of the letters alphabetically. So I hope after I've done a few of these that these feel easy. Um, I'm not sure that's the case, but I mean they're really easy for me, and um, hopefully, and usually by the time I, I grade tests, they, they turn out to be easy for students. I'm kind of hoping that's the case for you. All right, so 30, I need to find A intersection B prime. I know that set A has the numbers 1, 2, and 3 in it. But B prime, I don't know. B prime, I need to take 2, 3, and 4 out from the intersection, from the union, from the universe. And B prime is going to have 1, 5, and 6. So I wasn't given what B prime was, so I needed to create B prime by removing B from the universe. So now I'm intersecting A, which is 1, 2, and 3, which B prime, which is 1, 5, and 6. And when I intersect in two sets, I write what they have in common. These two sets have one in common. So for my answer, I'm going to have a set that just contains the number 1. But I could say A intersection B prime is the set that contains the number 1. Okay, Oof. just keep going, I guess. Um, 32, and you can do 31 and check your answer. So 32, I need to start first. I need to find B prime intersection, B 
prime intersection A. Remember again, B prime was 1, 5, and 6. So I'm going to start off doing B prime intersection A, which is taking the numbers 1, 5, and 6 that are in set B prime, intersecting them with such A, which is 1, 2, and 3. What those have in common is 1. I think I just did that. So B prime intersection A has just the numbers 1. So now I've done this part. So I could take my original problem, which was B prime intersection A union C prime, and I can take this and change it to just the set containing 1. Now I need to know what C prime is. If C has 1 and 5, C prime is going to have won't have 1, it won't have 5, it'll have 2, 3, 4, and 6, because 2, 3, 4, and 6 are the numbers in the universe that aren't in set C. So I'm going to union the set B, B prime intersection A with the set C prime, which is 2, 3, 4, and 6. And when I union those, I make a big set that contains both all the elements of the two sets written in a nice order without any duplication. And nicely, that's what comes out here. When I take the 1 from the left set and the 2, 3, 4, and 6 from the right set, join them together in a big set. It's not, I should write this. It should be B prime intersection A union C prime equals, and it has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 because that's what you get when you union those two. And then 34 wants me to find B prime intersection C. Again, I need to know what B prime is. B prime, well, it's a new, it's a new set. B is a set B, C, and D. So B prime, if I take B, C, and D from this universe, is just going to have the letter A. So I'm going to take B prime, which has just the letter A, keep my intersection symbol, and write my set C, which has A and D, and when I intersect, I'm writing what they have in common, and what they have in common is the letter A. So for my answer to problem 34, I'm going to say B prime intersection C is a set that just contains the letter A. Okay, 36 wants me to find B prime union C prime. B prime, we just did, it just has the element A. And C prime, if I take A and D from the universe, C prime is going to have just B and C. So if I'm doing B prime union C prime when I do 36, B prime has the element A. C has the element B and C, and when I union those, I just put those together in one bigger set. I don't need to write the duplication down, because I don't need to remove any duplication, because there isn't any duplication, and it's written in a nice order, so that's a good enough answer. Thirty-eight. I need to work from left to right. So I'm going to do the A prime union B prime first. So A prime is just going to have the letter D in it because it has everything in the universe other than A. And B prime was A. So A prime union B prime is a set A prime, which is D, union B prime, which is A, so that's just going to be the set D comma A, which I might write as A comma D. So the set A union B prime that I needed to do first has the elements A and D. So now I can rewrite the problem. The original problem was A prime union B prime intersection C. And instead of the A prime union B prime, I'm going to write the set AD. I'm going to leave the intersection C 
And then I'm going to change C to what it is. C is the set AD. Oh, well, that's surprising. That's kind of odd. I guess it can happen that those two sets equal to each other because it did happen. So my answer, because I'm intersecting, it's going to be AD because that's what they have in common. So I'm going to write the problem next to my answer just because I kind of prefer that. So I'm going to say A prime union B prime intersection C equals the set that has A and D in it. All right, I feel like I'm going to start making mistakes because I'm starting to wear out on myself. And I mean, I, I don't know, I'm you know, pretty used to doing math. So if, if you need to pause the video and come back, it's completely okay. All right, 40, I need to work from left to right. So the first thing in 40 I'm gonna handle is B prime intersection A prime. A prime just has the set as the element D. B prime just has the element A. So how I'm gonna intersect here is the set D that contains the set A with the set that contains just A. There's nothing in common. So B prime intersection A prime is just going to be an empty set. So now I can rewrite the problem. I can take B prime intersection A prime union C and for this replace it with the empty set union C. And then for the C I'm going to write A and D. Now I'm going to form those two sets together. Well, when I form, there's nothing to add from the empty set. So when I union an empty set with any set, I get the set you know, to the right of the union sign. So my answer is just going to be that set that contains B and D, or A and D. So my answer to problem 40, B prime intersection A prime union C, is just going to be the set that contains the elements A and D. A intersection B prime. So for 42, A is the set A, B, and C. And B prime is a set that just has A in it because B has A, B, and C. And in this universe, B prime is going to be the set that just has A. And intersections, what they have in common, what they have in common is A. So my answer to problem 42 is that A intersection B prime is the set that just contains the element A. So again, you should just be blowing through the odd problems as I do the even problems so that when the video ends, you're done with your homework. 44, our first thing I need to do is B intersection A prime. B is the set B, C, and D. A prime is just has a D in it. So B intersection A prime is just going to have the set that has D in it. So now I can take my problem and replace the B intersection A prime with what it's equal to. So this B intersection A prime I'm going to change to D, and then I still have the union C prime. Since C is A and D, C prime is B and C. So this is going to be B intersection A prime union C prime, which is that. And now I'm ready for my answer. I'm going to form those two sets into a bigger set which is D, B, and C. And it's nicer if I write the problem with my answer, which is B intersection A prime union C prime. And it's nicer if I write the letters alphabetically. So it's B, C, and D. Oh, oh these are the messy problems. So bunch of problems, new sets. We have S, T, and B as opposed to A, B, and C just to mix it up. You need to do the inside of the parentheses first. So when I do problem 46, the first thing I need to do is find S union T. 
S union T, S is going to be the set to 4 and 6. And my union that was the set T, 1, 2, and 4. When I get the two sets unioned together, I won't need the parentheses anymore. I can just drop the parentheses once I union them. So when I union these two sets, I get the set 2, 4, 6, 1, 2, 4. And I'll write that in a nice order. So S union T in parentheses is going to be the set 1, 2, 4, and 6. That's a start but not a finish if I drop the parentheses. So now the S union T intersection V, the S union T in a parentheses simplifies to without a parentheses 1, 2, 4, and 6. Once you've done the unioning of those two sets, you can drop the parentheses. I want to intersect that with V, which means I need to take the set 1, 2, 4, and 6 and intersect that with V, which is 4, 5, and 6. And that's what those sets have in common. And what they have in common is 4 and 6. So an answer for problem 46, S union T intersection V is going to have the numbers 4 and 6. And again, if you're feeling good about this, you can pause the video and just work all the problems. You don't need me to, you don't need to watch me do every problem if you don't feel you need to watch me do every problem. But there's not too many more left. You made it this far. I think we end it like at 54, 56, and we're at 48. So we've got 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, five problems to do. So inside the parentheses first, I can't just drop the parentheses after I find out the inside of the parentheses, in this case, because there's a complement, and I'll need to do the complement. But nevertheless, I have to work the inside of the parentheses. The inside of the parentheses, I'm going to write V, which is 4, 5, and 6, then the union symbol, and then the S, which is 2, 4, and 6. When I union those two, I get the set 4, 5, and 6, followed by the set 2, 4, and 6. And I don't need to write the 4 twice. I don't need to write the 6 twice. So this is going to be the set that has this 2 and that 4, 5, and 6. So I've got the inside of the parentheses simplified down to a single set. Now I'm going to do the complement. When I do the complement, I'm going to drop the parentheses. So the complement of 2, 4, 5, and 6, I'll go to the universe. I'll take the 2 away. I'll take the 4 away. I'll take the 5 away. I'll take the 6 away. The complement of that set is going to have 1 and 3 in it. Now I'm ready to write my answer. So the answer to problem 48 V union S prime is the set that contains the elements 1 and 3. Apparently four more problems. And they get kind of ridiculous with primes and parentheses. They can get really just messy to do. So 50, I need to do the inside of the parentheses first. The inside of the parentheses is S prime intersection V prime. S prime is going to be 1, 3, and 5, I guess, because S has the numbers 2, 4, and 6. And if I take 2, 4, and 6 away from the universal set, I'm left with 1, 3, and 5. So here, I'm intersecting the set 1, 3, and 5. And V prime, if V is 1, 4, 5, and 6, V prime is going to be 1, 2, and 3. So the two sets that I'm intersecting are S prime 1, 3, and 5, and V prime 1, 2, and 3. And when I intersect those, what they have in common are 1 and 3. So now I can get rid of the parentheses in the problem. So the original problem was S prime intersection V prime union T. And in place of the parentheses S prime intersection V prime, I'm going to write the numbers 1 and 3. I'm going to keep my union sign, put the T after the union, and now I'm going to get rid of the T because T is equal to 1, 2, and 4. 
So I'm going to take this set one and three and union that with the set one, two, and four. I can't even draw the squiggly brackets anymore. And when I do this union, I'll take the one and the three and the one, the two, and the four and throw them together in a big set, take out that duplication of the one, write them in a nice order, and then I'm ready to say commit to an answer. So the answer to problem 50, the S prime intersection V prime union T is going to be the set that has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Fifty-two doesn't have any parentheses. Fifty-one does, so you have to you have to do the inside of the parentheses first. I just need to work from left to right. So the first thing I'm going to do is find S prime union T. Again, S prime is one, three, and five. So the first thing I'm going to do is find S prime, which is one, three, and five. I'm going to union that with T, which is one, two, and four. And when I union two sets, I make a big set that contains each element in either of the sets. So that's going to be 1, 3, and 5, and 1, 2, and 4. There's, I don't need to write the 1 twice, and I can write the numbers in a nice order. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's the beginning of the problem. So now I can go back to the problem, S prime union T intersection V prime, and in place of this, I'm going to put the set that contains 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I'm going to intersection that with V prime, which means I need to know what V prime is because V is 4, 5, and 6. V prime is going to be 1, 2, and 3. It's everything other than 4, 5, and 6 that's in the universe. So I'm asked now to intersection these two sets. place of the V prime symbol I put the numbers 1, 2, and 3 and what these have in common are 1, 2, and 3 so now I can write my answer writing the problem next to the answer S pro no parentheses S prime union T intersection V prime equals the set that contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3 two more Ugh, 56 is yucky. 54 is not so bad. 54 work from left to right. So first I'm going to do T union V prime. T is 1, 2, and 4. Union symbol. V prime is 1, 2, and 3. So I put these in a big set, I get 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3. I don't need two ones, I don't need two twos. I can write them in a nice order. So T union V prime is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now I can go from my problem, T union V prime intersection S prime, and I can make the T union V prime into 1, 2, 3 and 4. I'm going to intersect that with S prime. S prime again was 1, 3, and 5 because it's everything in the universe that's not in S. So now I can rewrite this as 1, 2, 3, 4 intersection 1, 3, and 5 intersects what they have in common. What they have in common is 1 and 3, so now I can write my answer. And my answer to T union V prime intersection S prime is going to be the set that has the numbers 1 and 3 in it. Alright, last problem, and it does look like the worst problem. So, let me see. I think it's the last problem. Yeah, it is. So, I gotta do the inside of the parentheses first, and that parentheses has a prime. So for my problem 56, I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna start with the inside of the parentheses, S intersection T. S is two, four, and six. T 
t is 1, 2, and 4. Intersections, what those have in common, they have 2 and 4 in common. So the parentheses, the inside of the parentheses comes out to be the set 2, 4, but outside the parentheses is a prime, so before I drop the parentheses, I need to find the complement of this. The complement of 2 and 4 is 1, 3, 5, and 6. So this set, S intersection T complement, is going to be the set that has 1, 3, 5, and 6. So now I can get back to my problem. My problem was V union S intersection T complement. Now I can say this is V union, and then in place of the S intersection T complement, put the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 6 inside a set. Now I'm going to replace the V with 4, 5, and 6. So I'm taking 4, 5, and 6 and unioning that with 1, 3, 5, and 6. When you union, you make a big set. So I'm going to have 4, 5, and 6 from the left set. 1, 3, 5, and 6 from the right set. I don't need to write the 5 twice. I don't need to write the 6 twice. And I can write the numbers in a nice order. So I'm ready for my answer to this problem 56. V union S intersection T complement is going to have the set that has 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. All right, so hopefully you feel okay about the section. I mean, it's not necessarily the most pleasant section to get through, but hopefully by the time you got through this, you understand what union, intersection, and complement are and how to work union, intersection, complement problems. That's all you need to get out of this section. So hopefully you got out what you needed to get out and you got all your homework done and checked and you shot me an email if you found an error somewhere in my video or in my answers. Thank you.